Hey there, beautiful creatures. Welcome back to my channel. For those who are new here, my name is Audrey Gubador. I'm a second year medical student in the Philippines. And I have a quarantine baby coming up and it's this. And I have a lot of backlogs before I start and embark on a new journey to the center of the earth, which is PBL2. So I have to finish this because this is a priority compared to my other projects because this, these are my mom's wishes. Also, want to divert your brains and your minds and your hearts, shout out, as we're doing one relaxing thing, which is painting, while we're chit-chatting on one of the challenging subjects in first year, which is anatomy, laboratory session, aka studying with cadavers. So let's start. <laughs> that I'm using are okay the plastic cover that I got from one of the book binds that I don't really use anymore actually for this one um, it it is a plastic folder so after years of using pallet plates that is equal to your G tech ball pens that you lose almost every time so with this you don't have to spend so much um, it cleans easily and not end up getting heartbroken if it's misplaced my usual synthetic brushes I will be linking them in the description box and I am using the KT gold effect fast drying high brilliance um spray paint for the most of the painting stuff that are in gold i am also using this etude house uh, makeup that is actually expired it's found in my painting kit so i would rather put this to give it an opulent effect an opal effect if you may and lastly I'm using the Rain or Shine Elastometric Waterproofing Paint in Fresco in the color Sweet Mocha. Okay, so I actually know that a part of the semester would be online, but I guess as face-to-face -face classes would start, there could be a higher chance that you could study the cadaver because, you know, cadavers are actually our first patients and it's the rite of passage, I guess, towards medical school. And I think it would be a great deal for you. Nail anatomy lab so anyway it was actually a humbling experience to finally see a cadaver because so apart from the 15 seasons of Grey's Anatomy and the good doctor I feel like I am the most excited student in that class because of that I wasn't scared I, I just want to see and open the body bag immediately but you know we had to go for orientation and stuff like that and how to take care of the cadaver and of course you have to pray before and after opening the body bag so Oh my gosh, I'm chit-chatting and I haven't started painting yet. So, yeah, we had eight cadavers in total, I guess, because CIM at that time, Chromo side, we are, we have 16 groups, I think. Oh my gosh, 16 groups, 15. Let's just stick to 16. <laughs> anyway, yeah, we had 16 groups and so therefore we had eight cadavers in total because you would be dividing one cadaver into half in the sagittal section. So that means you would be dividing the cadaver into right and left, okay? So that two groups can actually share one cadaver. But then fear not, my dear friends, because you will always have the chance to transfer from one cadaver to another. So yes, that's a big, big deal for, for us, of course, because you have to compare one um, cadaver to another, each structure, is similar but they're not the same on each uh, cadaver actually so one thing that i could not forget here's the tea was okay after opening the body bag and after praying as we opened the body bag wow it's a she among the class there were only two cadavers um yeah, two cadavers that are female and six were male. So if you think about the fat composition between males and females, you know, like if you're, we're talking about the difference here, it's actually um, a fact that females have more fat composition than males. So I was like, sure. if we're trying to identify structures because um, or once we're trying to identify the structures or even skin for that matter because we're actually graded during skinning and the more structures that 
you can actually preserve the the bigger the score or the higher the score. So if you're thinking about preserving the superficial structures, then with a fat composition such as a female, then you really have to be very careful. Kanang wala gid mi kind of giswerte siguro ato na part sa size because we actually had the smallest cadaver. She was petite and she was female. Orders work every second night until you drop and don't complain. And in studying anatomy, actually, um, size matters. Mm, size matters in studying anatomy. I'm trying to justify that point. Okay, was it like like for me, it's actually better to study something that is identifiable immediately because studying a material firsthand, like on your first pass, it's already hard. So if you're trying to look for another structure that's also hard, then yeah, you're not preserving your endangered species that are called your brain cells. So you have to look, do something about it, you know, like you would actually want something that's making your life easier than it is challenging, more challenging. We already knew that for the musculoskeletal system, it's going to be a challenge. When we skinned her, okay, one thing, one particular thing that we noticed also was... So, okay, what are you going The right hand, the right upper extremity, per se, was actually in this position. We had to take turns in order to dislocate the joints. Shoulder joint, elbow joint, wrist joint. Hello, rigor mortis is shaking. We went na to the cardiovascular system. That's when I understood things already. Because when we opened her rib cage and extracted her heart, the grub is the extraction, and we, we took out her heart in order to study, right? Oh my god. If I can just flash a photo of how big her heart was, hopefully I can, but I can't. Her heart, guys, was actually bigger than my hands, extended this way. And she's what? 4'8", 4'9", I guess 4'10", and I'm 5'2". Yeah, okay, she's petite, she's really small, and she has that big of a heart, literally, and hopefully figuratively. Wow! So I was like, hmm, I wonder how she died, you know? You, you as medical students, you know, like, that's actually one of my first medical awakening oh my gosh ganan na jugo ma doctor ka cool ani uy ina na ba na thinking char and one more exam as we went through the other systems as well we actually checked okay the liver i know that the liver encompasses you know like the upper quadrant of the stomach but oh my gosh her liver was actually the largest compared to all cadavers you would even know that that was our liver during the practical exam because of the size Char, we own the liver. So, yeah, so hepatomegaly plus cardiomegaly, I was like, right, side eyed heart failure. <laughs> yeah, that was, that was really cool and exciting to see, right? So, yeah, that's what happened. So, first tip that I can give you, okay, in studying the cadaver is first, okay, about the skinning process. So, during skinning, it's actually good to think about how many scalpel blades you need to buy. It's actually better if you buy at least a box of scalpel blades because sharp scalpel blades are, of course, better to maneuver. And apart from that, this is actually my mistake. It's an honest mistake. When I was skinning the head, uh, make sure that you preserve the occipital frontalis muscle because it's really thin. It's even thinner than a pancake that it's, I guess it's, Oh my gosh, yeah, pareha sir ani ka thin. Oh my gosh, nakasala ju ko sa kong groupmates kay. Kuon, kanang I never thought that the scalp was very thin. And I placed too much pressure on the scalp that naabot na mi sa periosteum, ma'am. Say graduhan sa ulo dai. Wa na dai. Nalabay na ako yung sa mga hair. So, yeah, that's one mistake. So, if you also want to maneuver I knew at that time, I didn't know what I was doing. Like, dali rajug kay ko naka, naka slice. And then, pag tanaw na ko, oh my gosh! Pag ara na ko, oh my god, bone na! I failed to mention the fat composition of 
the of the body itself you also have to think about where the fat goes normally goes okay in the body and one example that i can give you that has a lot of fat but also has superficial structures an example is the great saphenous vein which is found at the medial portion of the thigh so surrounded by a body of fat that we weren't really able to locate it immediately nakatsha moms so that's one thing that you also need to take note so second of all okay one good thing that i can also share is to ask for malin from the lab tech in order to preserve um, your cadaver as well. The doctors will also mention that it's better to get the plastic. What kind of plastic is that? Though, katung, katung plastic na gamiton gani para ma preserve imong vegetables. Not the ziplock though. Basta katung marag. Katung stretchable na plastic. I don't know what that is. in the comment section down below. Really love to know what type of plastic it was. But, ay! Wrapping plastic. <laughs> Do everything in your willpower to actually preserve your cadaver kay you don't want that the first day after skinning ang imuhang cadaver no kay mas gahi pa sa beef jerky moms and then you won't be able to appreciate the structures ba so that's also one thing you also actually want no once you study the musculoskeletal system it's actually better um, to have to have these muscles well preserved na more sure chicken joy sa Jollibee moms na ina naka juicy I know it's not it's not the right term basta something na ina it's that preserved mo na akong pasabot also for the third tip it's good to bring your own pins I guess the push pins that you use once you're identifying asa na ka na ka travel sa world those types of pins the office pins push pins you can also use okay threads they use that for practical exams or yarn or if you are very innovative and you weren't able to bring those stuff, you can actually cut a portion of your glove on the distal side. I know that's very unsterile, but yeah, we usually do that. We always do that. We never bring a thread. You will tie the structures using the thread or the yarn. And it's very helpful in identifying or retracting structures in the neck because the neck portion is quite complex also compared to the other stuff uh, and i guess that's one example that i can give you wherein you can use those threads so let's talk about the best apps that we can really vouch for in studying the anatomy laboratory so there are a few apps for that we have complete anatomy visible body anatomy zone and we recommend you buying it during the start of the school year so i guess it's more practical for you to do this especially that most of the syllabus right now is online and it's more of an interactive approach to anatomy that you can also study at home and it's complete with the origin the insertion the nerve supply and the action of each muscle so you can also save notes for future purposes and you cannot go away with anatomy laboratory without getting a hold of a copy of netters and or mcmin's atlas now Natter's Atlas, okay, is more popular, but for me, Macmins is perfect for studying accurately because the pictures are real cadavers, like what you would see if you're performing a surgery or an autopsy compared to Natter's. The pictures in Natter's are painted by hand, and the pictures are very colorful and crisp. And of course, every chapter also in Natter's has its own Iona and with sample radiographs like Macmins. It's also good to get a hold of Ackland's video, Atlas of Human Anatomy, which contains nearly 330 videos and presents them in a moving fashion. So you can visualize how joints, muscles, and tendons move in real life. So there will be a portion of that. They will put the muscle belly towards the origin so you can see the action of the muscle. And or this is how I study the musculoskeletal system and the anatomy lab. So I just pull the muscle to see the action and this is actually how I teach my other classmates. So, so the dissection videos are of beautiful quality 
and the fresh tissue dissection allows you to visualize the structures realistically so everything is clearly explained including the attachment and insertion of muscles and i watch this as a supplement for class material and as a dissection review before anatomy laboratory class so i actually bought the dvd set instead of the web subscription during college but it was more useful in medical school so just give me a private message if you want to borrow the dvd so it also pays you know after studying your cadaver you go to the other group in order to compare the structures like i said a while ago because during the practical spong good um these parts of that system will be dismembered from the whole cadaver itself and then you will observe you no know, for example um sa musculoskeletal system um, makita na lang ni mo kay tag biceps from the dismembered humerus or for example you would notice that once mahuman na tanan units nya padung na ang final exam um gaman na lang gyud mahi bilance yung cadaver that's how dismembered it is so um it really pays to to yeah to be familiar of the structures that you are studying in the anatomy lab so next um if the doctor also goes out of their way to teach you about certain structures listen and shoot videos yeah they rarely i guess they rarely do that unless you ask um if you have any confusion regarding that certain topic and then also there's one thing na wala na ko na na think about kay ang pituitary gland no ni gawas ang sala tersica pituitary gland mums na radiograph ni gawas gid siya pagkuan first practical exam bones pa to mums aside from studying okay if you're done studying with the structures you know you have to study the radiographs um it's radiograph 101 there's also in macmins and a little bit in others yeah it would also pay that you have your own flashcards for you to induce active learning so that's what i did during pt school and it really helped me and i didn't know at the time mo good na macmins so somehow gin ato na ko siya from macmins na the certain structures that i took pictures kay gibutangan na ko number 1 number 2 number 3 and then the answers are actually at the back so it's like your own flashcards good and then you try to quiz yourself okay what's number 1 uh, okay correct ko okay what's number 2 cuz during during the practicals i guess you're only given around 40 seconds to answer You can try making your own anatomy flashcards or save yourself time by purchasing them ready-made and print your notes before the anatomy practical exams especially if devices are not allowed in the waiting area before you take your exams. So since gross anatomy and neuroanatomy are of um different somehow different units, maybe I can slide in a little bit of neuroanatomy with the CNS part the brain and spinal cord so for neuroanatomy it's going to be more of identification and ask Bell's physical therapy for this to guide you side by side with Snell and Macmin so, so we weren't really able to get hold of the brain and spinal cord for the labs but I'll just link in some videos that I have during PT school and hopefully it will help you. So just remember that the main markings of the brain will start with the sulcus of Orlando and Sylvian Fisher and you can work your way up with the fissures and grooves. Um what I did during PT school was photocopying our near anatomy lab book to color each structure actually. But I guess I was just too extra so maybe you can take out some labels and quiz yourself in a way you like that's more efficient. So for example for the brain stem just know what parts are ventral and dorsal like for the brain stem there are two nerves that don't originate from there which are the optic and olfactory nerve brain stem is divided into three you have the midbrain pons and medulla so for the midbrain um cranial nerves are 3 and 4 and the fourth cranial nerve the trochlear nerve is the only cranial nerve that undergoes complete decussation dd decussation dorsal side Okay, that's how I remember it. So, pons, cranial nerves five, six, seven originate there, and medulla nine, ten, eleven, twelve, which are found ventrally. So the pottery painting is all finished. Cue video montage. So, what are your other tips for studying the cadavers? Write them down in the comment section below to help future students. And like painting, you will never appreciate the first stroke. Always keep on going until you're satisfied with your work, and never discredit how far you've come. Till the next video, and I hope this helped you a lot.
Goodbye.